Seven thirty nine at Cape Hill. Welcome back to Acadia on this morning news. Rob Kirkpatrick with Bernadette Lee. We're joined. I'm in the studio by Conrad Como, Lafayette Parish Assessor. Good morning. How are you? A plus. How hey, are you? Plus, it's it's kind of a slow time in your office right now. No calls. <laughs> no, just boring. A, just a few. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> so another day of the another day of the coal mine. You know? Yes. Yes. So the assessments went out. Um, I don't know how that's done. It's fits in stages. I know I've already gotten mine in, at mm-hmm. my house, We've seen but um. Uh, a lot of people have questions as far as understanding goes, and does the flood play into it, or some other questions people have been calling in to ask. So what's kind of the and view from 30,000 yeah. feet about where we are here in our parish? Sure. What what happens is that the state constitution mandates a reassessment every four years, and 2016 was the reassessment year in the midst of everything going yep. on. <laughs> And so we had to reassess, and it had to be based on sales around January 1st, 2015. So we did the reassessment, and then along comes this little rainstorm, and now we have to go back and look at those properties that were uh, flooded. Uh, So in order to do that, people that did have water in their homes, water damage inside their homes from the flooding, need to have a FEMA number the claim number, mm-hmm. and give that to us along with the informa- pertinent inf- other pertinent information. And we will adjust the uh, assessments of those properties accordingly. Now, those that weren't damaged, of course, this, that do- it's, it doesn't yeah, affect nothing, them. No, right. no remedy for, right. for those individuals, right. which right. is, you know, 99% of us. That, that's correct. Yeah. And, and the uh, a lot of people are saying, well, wait a minute, how did the property values go up in one year so much? Mm-hmm. Well, you got to remember that wasn't just in one year. That was over a period of four years and in some cases eight years because in the last reassessment in 2012, there weren't a lot of changes that took place uh-huh. because we were in kind of a flat economy. I right. Mean, and prices, we were. Prices of homes weren't really doing much in uh-huh. 2011 uh-huh. because remember that was after the 2010 oil spill. So wow. prices kind of laid flat there uh-huh. during that time period. So when 2012 reassessment came around, we didn't have to make a lot of changes. Now, you go eight years more, or four years from that point, but eight years from the last real big reassessment, prices just increased tremendously. Yeah, and because across the country, the economy is much better than it is here, mm-hmm. and, and we've lost 16,000 jobs in our region. Well, that's what I was going to say, People obviously. automatically assumed, hey, us. things are not going to be as good. However, yeah. since the assessment came from as of from January, January 1st, 1st, 2015, that is correct. it was before everything, the downturn in the economy, everything. It's, right. And right. it's still painful. So let me ask you, how would you, would you, would you say you're receiving 30% more telephone calls at your office to ask about the issues, these issues? Mr. Assessor? It's, pro- it's probably 90% more. Probably 90% more, yeah. <laughs> right, because in a given year, in between the reassessment periods, the assessments are pretty flat. Right. So, you know, you don't get a lot of calls about, you know, the it values kind of because mm-hmm. it, yeah. But yeah. then when a reassessment hits, well, the phone just mm-hmm. burns up. It, will the council be able to do anything for those flood victims, let's say, who are still, I mean, it just seems life like life must be on a, an awful roller coaster for most of those people. Is there a way for the council to say we will back up what the collection time is or not? Is it because isn't your office having to go out? We have a, what about a thousand homes that were impacted in Lafayette Parish? I, you know, I, I've heard it started out at fifteen hundred to two thousand. Okay. Then I heard maybe six thousand. I don't really know what the number is right. at this point. I think there have been so many different pockets of areas that no one heard about. Right, right. Yeah. And until we, we get all the claims in mm-hmm. our office, you know, for the reassessment issues, then, mm-hmm. you know, we'll have a better idea at that point. But mm-hmm. that may take months, mm-hmm. you know, before people. And unfortunately, to your question, uh, the collection period is, is something dependent upon the tax collectors. Mm-hmm. And the council really can't affect that. It's affect all it. it's all dealt with by state law. By state law. So, so we would need the assistance of our local delegation yeah. to see if there would be any remedy. Yeah, there, for that. there there's a possibility some maybe. remedies there that mm-hmm. that exist. Uh, you know, they can ex- extend payment plans in some cases, or mm-hmm. you know, I, that's not it, my realm. Right, so I really don't right. don't get into. And we have to think about how that's going to affect our bottom line here, though, in the city of Lafayette, absolutely, and in the parish because of the idea that we still have to pay our firefighters, we still have to pay our policemen. Right. right. Um, well, the the good thing for us is that we were not like 
Bat- East Absolutely. Baton Rouge Parish or Livingston Parish where 75% mm-hmm. of the homes and businesses were underwater. Mm-hmm. My gosh, that would destroy the, the tax base in a mm-hmm. hurry. I mean, mm-hmm. That's that's a tough lick. Mm-hmm. So thank God that you know we didn't get that. And I, I really, my heart goes out for all the people that did have the water yeah. in their homes because I saw the water rising in yeah. my yard. And I can only imagine what it's like if it's rising in your house. Right. It's just... You know, I guess if you turn back the clock, like you said, eight years, if there was not much change, you know, nope. four years ago when it, mm-hmm. when it happened. Um, you turn back the clock eight years about things in our parish that didn't even exist. Right. I mean, you didn't have the ambassador extension. Mm-hmm. You know, all that development out That's there right. was still on rural roads, you know, mm-hmm. and still that whole portion out there. That is my end of town. And, you know, my property specifically, it doubled in value. But... There was probably nothing there. You right. know what I mean? There there might yeah. have been a few houses at the back of the neighborhood. But, I mean, but there was, was nothing it. right around, you know, going eight years back at, there at all. How much does that type of, of situation impact overall taxes maybe for the average homeowner? Does it really – is it specific to your neighborhood? Um, what are your thoughts there? Right. We, we don't <laughs> – the one question that I get a lot is, well, why are you comparing my property to River Ranch? Right. Or, or to Greenbrier or whatever. Pick, right. Pick the pick name a, of the – Pick a subdivision. Pick a and and I say we don't. You know, it's based on the locale in that area, in your mm-hmm. neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And so we go neighborhood by neighborhood to reassess. And that's why it's a, it's a tedious process. It takes a long time. And we do it only once every four years. And uh, one of the things that I've heard a lot of this year is that people are looking at their reassessments and they're saying, my God, my, my lot doubled, my land doubled in value. In value. My, and my house, my building stayed the same. Mm-hmm. Well, if you look at the value of the land and really look at it, uh, you'll see that it's probably still fairly assessed, even though it doubled, which means that it was way too low before. <laughs> see, that's what, and, and I was having that discussion with Brandon yesterday, one of the other people we work with, and I said, you know, that's what happened in, in my case. It was very undervalued. Now it is more to in line with the correct assessment. And I live a pretty small small life. My right. my footprint is pretty small. Right. So I can only imagine for people whose homes are twice the size of mine that it's a little bit of sticker shock. What right. other kind of questions like that are you getting? Well, it's it's I mean, they're mad. People are mad. We don't understand because we'd only we only encounter it once every four right, years. Right. Well, where the, we see this this happening. This the, unfortunately, it's the, the economy is driving a lot of the questions. Absolutely. It's you know, everybody, everybody says, well, look at the economy. How can the yeah. prices be going up? Well, they are. I mean, if you talk to realtors, currently they may be static, you know, and they're not mm-hmm. climbing, but people, it's taking longer to sell the homes, but they're still selling for a good price. A nice price. And 2016, so, this year, and we're basing it, of course, on the 1st of 2015. 15. At that time last year, still across the country, the trend has been for prices to go up. So Absolutely. it's, and you then... Between now and this time, we've lost thousands of jobs, and we have a painful situation. Here. Right, right. And, and so people, it's a mindset Absolutely. a lot of times that people think. That's that, exactly what that, I thought, right, too. Right, right. How can this be when right. things are so tough? But it's because the way our business works, mm-hmm. and, and it's, you know, it's unfortunate the timing of the economy. But right. And if you're, let's say, a person who is a little bit older, maybe more established, and you're not planning to move, um, then maybe you're not going to see, oh, the benefit of it. If I sell my home, it's worth a lot more than it was before. However, your equity, I would assume, would be going up, maybe. Well, sure. But sure. then to find a new house would be, right, would right. be up, right. too. Right, exactly. I mean, right. You, right. However, you can borrow against that is what I'm suggesting, oh, perhaps. Yeah, sure. yeah. So for right. some people, that might give them a little more power with their dollar. Right. Um, but right. that is still not a wonderful thing when you say to yourself, uh-oh, now I've got to pay twice what I paid last year. Right. And remember that for senior citizens, those 65 oh, yeah. and older, there's a freeze on property mm-hmm. assessments. What is what is the assessment for veterans? We've in my household, we've been looking back and forth on that. Um, is there? I know but, one time the state talked about it, but then I don't think Lafayette necessarily adopted it. Where are we with that? It, it's it's uh, not for just veterans. It's okay. disabled veterans. Mm-hmm. That that is it's so in they place. Must be a disabled veteran. Right. It must be okay. a disabled veteran. They can freeze it if they have a 50% service-related disability. Mm-hmm. And if they're uh, 100% disabled uh, or if they were killed in action, then, then the spouse, spouse can get uh-huh. a, a 
and actually mm-hmm. an additional homestead exemption, mm-hmm. seventy-five, another seventy-five thousand or seventy-five hundred. Okay, on top because of. we were trying to answer someone's question, yeah, so but, that's okay. So if but there are very few cases that, that apply to apl- applies is, to the it. the fifty percent service mm-hmm. disability does apply. To a number of, to a number of households. Number of yeah, we're you, trying to answer someone's question. What do you think the percentages of people who just don't go through that step? I mean, people don't realize. I was really lucky. I got, I won't say the word, uh, it, I didn't get homestead exemption in Atlanta because it was never right. passed to me. Right. It was something I would have to figure out on my own. My title company never told me about it. Right. So I knew when I was yeah, closing on only, a hassle here, right. you know, this is my second house that I bought. Right. And the title company was like, and sign this for your homestead right. exemption. We'll right. submit it for you. Mm-hmm. And I remember leaving there thinking, thank, thank goodness. <laughs> you know, like, because it's, yeah. do people just not know about that? And, and what is the benefit? Yeah, around here, do they? Well, I don't know. A lot of people know about it around here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have over 50,000 that participate in homestead yeah. exemption in Lafayette Parish. So, I mean, I think most people know about it. You know, there are a few people around that, that may not. Maybe they don't. They don't, but, you know, they'll bump into somebody and mm-hmm. somebody will say, well, do you have a homestead exemption? They say, what is that? Mm-hmm. What it does is it allows the first $75,000 of market value, or in our lingo, 7500 of assessed value, 10% of that. It allows that to be exempt from taxes, property taxes. So if your house is valued at, say, 150000 on the market, the first seventy five thousand is not taxed. So it's a great benefit. It amounts to about six hundred and thirty five dollars, six hundred and forty dollars per year of taxes that you don't have to pay. And so it it's a heck of a benefit. Mm-hmm. And then uh, as I mentioned, you have the freeze program that allows senior citizens and disabled vets to uh to freeze the assessed value of the mm-hmm. property. Now that doesn't mean their taxes can't go up uh. or down. But okay, and explain that because it, that was another question about a senior citizen was asking that. And what is the age for the senior citizen? Sixty-five. Sixty-five, like it is for current beneficiaries of Social Security. Right. Okay. Now explain how the taxes can go up. Well, what happens there is all we're doing is freezing the assessed value. Mm-hmm. So if the value is one hundred fifty thousand, let's say we stop it at one hundred fifty. So you know, in this reassessment, if it should have gone to two twenty-five. Well, we leave it at 150. 150, yeah. But that doesn't affect the tax rate. So right now the of tax, course. the millage, forgot, the millage yes. rate in the parish is about 85 mills. Mm-hmm. Well, if next year the council and the school board or somebody yeah. raises their millage to, and the total becomes 87 mills, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden their tax bill increases. And so that's how it, it the tax. Yeah, no freezing in the mills, the current right, mills, right, whenever you go for right, that as part of your homestead. Right. Exemption. But you're, you're talking just a few dollars, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. on, a, on a tax bill of the millage rate changes. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it would cause an increase in, in their tax bill, mm-hmm. a slight increase. We are speaking with our Lafayette Parish tax assessor, Conrad Como, because everybody has questions. We've had questions, especially since the bills are being delivered to, to mailbox. Oh, so, not the bills. These the are reassessment, the reassessment notice. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, please. I immediately think Bill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and the funny thing is that people will send in checks, mm-hmm. and and we have to and the tax due, collector returns the checks. And it's due on the thirty first of December. Right. Okay. Well, the tax bills will go out in uh, sometime in November, mm-hmm. and they have until the end of the year to pay for. To pay. Right. What is the best place that people have uh, questions yeah. um, to answer? How the best way to contact your office? Well, they can visit my website for one for that's LafayetteAssessor dot com. They can just call us two nine one seven zero eight zero, and they can also in, uh, email us at info at lafayetteassessor dot com. Okay, really and that's really important for the folks. If you have sure. flood damage and you have that FEMA number, make sure that you get with the tax assessor's office. And we are asking everybody that is claiming that they have flood damage to please provide us with their FEMA number. Yep, a claim number. They because we're trying to prevent fraud and abuse. Absolutely. You know, we don't want people just coming Absolutely. in and say, oh, yeah, well, I had flood damage. And, mm-hmm. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. Did you yeah. really? You've All been right. very kind to answer our questions. Sure. Thank you so much. We'll Anybody get all this information answer? up as long, along with this interview if you want to listen back to it on our website a little bit later on this morning, yep. kpel965.com. It's 753.